there was a there was a there was a time where you know I got an offer or whatever, right? And uh, they labeled me as a trainer. And they're like, well, if we go with this trainer, or this trainer, I'm like, well, first of all, <laughs> the percentages, you know, what I'm saying, there's no way we could be having the same percentages because I'm, I'm not just a trainer. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm a brand. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It's a big difference. Anybody yeah. can be a trainer, but can they run their own brand? Can they oh, run their own brand? Oh, my goodness. Another episode of Beyond the Ball podcast. I'm your host, Jonathan Jones, and you all know all the ballers out there. The, the focus of this podcast is ultimately to serve and support student athletes and help them by sharing stories, strategies, and success. Man, and I'm pretty excited today because I, I have my have my fellow teammate, have my former roommate, none other than Mr. Carlton Grant on the show. And and and, and the thing about the thing about Mr. Grant is, is he's a founder of Work Club. He, he's, he's player development. And, and if there's anybody who's looking to get their skills and elevate to the next level, man, you, you got to hit up Mr. Work Club. KG, how you doing, boss, man? I'm, I'm doing amazing, man. I can't complain. Good, good, good. Did I miss anything? Is there, is there anything I missed? Or, or, or can you just give the people a little snippet of, about you? Because uh, I know I didn't cover it all. So go, go ahead. I'm going to kick you the mic and let you, let you brag on yourself for a second, man. Shoot, man, you you kind of touch touch basis with with it all, you know. I do I do player development um through youth all the way to NBA, so I got a wide variety of uh client a client base. So that's what we do. That's what's up. That's what's up. Yeah, man. I mean, you know, I've always se seen you always have a way with handling the rock, but seeing this come after college and, and you know, seeing, seeing the way you work with youth and seeing the way you work with um, professional athletes, like wh where did, where did this come from? Where, where did work club start and, and when did work club start? Man, actually I did my first training with one of our teammates, Eric DeRue. Mm -hmm. Eric DeRue. I was uh, doing my student coaching thing after, you know, I completed my last year. And uh, ever since then, I was like, I, I, I kind of like this, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, just trying to get back to the game. Um, I was looking for internships. I heard about a place called Impact. Impact, um, they did a lot of pro professional training. They had post-grad, you know, they was the, the whole nine, the complete package. So I originally was going to get an internship in Florida, actually. And, um, I found out there was one in Las Vegas. So I'm like, wait, hold on. <laughs> they got an impact in Vegas too. So they, you know, I went in, I checked it out. You know, they wanted to know if I had a degree or whatever. And I was like, yeah, they let me go in there. And I spent that summer in there and I, it was lit. Probably <laughs> met over like 20 NBA players. Um, you know, I just took advice. I ended up coaching the post grad over there, and then that that next year it was the NBA pre draft, which was around April Aprilish, and um, that was when like Peyton Siva and all these they just won a championship for Louisville. Mm. You know they bring this this new draft class, and shoot, it was uh it was a good experience in that one year. I ended up going back. And then uh, I ended up getting a job, actually, in South Carolina, uh, Division II school. Yeah, mm -hmm. Division II school for the women's. I don't know if you remember that. Yeah, so uh, I did one year out there, but it was the it was that that coach's last last year on contract, and we needed to make the playoffs. Mm. We didn't make it. We we lost the game to get to the playoffs, and uh, that coach resigned. I went back to Vegas and uh, started the work club. I was like, I need to bring all my ideas that I have for impact because, you know, I was always into directing and this and that, you know, they tried to give me the, the label as the, 
the media guy, the media director or something oh. like that, right? Because <laughs> I actually filmed like a documentary of one of the post-grad players, you know, like the day-to-day -day living. Mm. And it kind of went viral low-key. They owe me some money, man. <laughs> 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 kind of went viral on YouTube. And, um, you know, I was big into that. So I had plenty of ideas of how I wanted, you know, the how to promote so uh yeah i started the work club did my own thing and we've been rocking ever since man okay okay so you just told us you know a, a little bit about your journey with, with you bouncing around and, and and being at impact and then impact is, is is impact what would impact be considered like like is it is it similar to uh, like a prep school or, or or what 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 is impact well impact is uh they pretty much the full program. Um, for instance, the post grad, they actually provide living. So, you know, that's fifth year, fifth year seniors. Mm. You know, they're just trying to get a, another opportunity. So, you know, they prepare at impact for a whole year. They, they put them through the program, you know, training all day, um, playing against, you know, like junior colleges and other post grad schools. So that's one of one of the services they provide. Then they got the like I said, the pre-draft. So, you know, they're just preparing for the NBA draft. They're getting the weights. They're getting the the training that's similar to the draft combine, you know, helping prepare for certain drills and whatnot. And, um, you know, the NBA guys, they come out there and train for the summer. You know, they'd be on their meal prep. They just get the full, the full nine. Mm. Okay, I I I had I had no idea they they had all that going on over there at Impact. I thought I thought it was just like one or the other versus all that that you just said. So that's yeah. crazy. Yeah, they doing they doing it now. Yeah, but you said so so they tried to get you to be the media director. So hold on, KG, you got you got to you got to fill us in because because you know the people may not know. Like, how did you even learn how to edit video or or anything like that? Like like where did where did that come about? Because <laughs> we fast forward it. You player development. You got the work club where where you're training youth to. To, to guys who, who are pro, guy, guys and young ladies who are pro. So, so talk, talk a little bit. Take, take us back, KG. Let us inside your head now. Well, shoot. Uh, when I was in college, um, I had went back. I was playing basketball at Southwestern Oregon. I had came back to Vegas. And I was chilling with my boys or whatever. And they put me on with this, this thing, this program called FL Studio. <laughs> FL Studio, that's that's making beats. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, I got I got into it. I'm like, man, this is cool. Cause I was always that kid in the, in high school or middle school that was banging on the table, doing the grind and beat and doing all type of beats. I thought I was that guy. Like I'm known <laughs> for that. And uh shoot, I, I fell in love with it, man. Um shoot, I fell in love with it when I got to Texas. I was in I was in it heavy. I mean, <laughs> I, I, cause you know, I had, I had injuries and this and that. So actually when, when I got to UT Tyler, I was on the beats. I ended up connecting with a uh, B hemp. I want to do the, do the Ricky Bobby style. <laughs> so I'm <laughs> like, okay, he got a hit. I need to get, I need to lock in. Mm. So that first two years at UT Tyler, I didn't even play. I didn't even hoop. I gained like, I was the heaviest I ever been. I was like two. I got up to like 225. You know, I was playing at 185, bro. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I was like, man, I want, you know, my time is running out. So I ended up getting in shape, and I played that last year with y'all. But I was still in the music, so that was part of the media stuff. I invested in a camera. I put, I, I invested like 2,000 in camera, 1,000 on the lens mm -hmm. that was that was when i start taking photos of stuff um working on a little video but you know i, I made that movie i got my people involved <laughs> we made a scary movie that was my first project it was about an hour and 30 minutes long youtube they got on my ass <laughs> <laughs> because you know obviously it was my first movie and it was a lot of wasted time in there. I ended up cropping. I ended up cropping out a lot of stuff and made it thirty minutes. I never released it. I thought about releasing it again, 
for 30 minutes of not all the wasted stuff though. But uh yeah, that that was that was where the, the media stuff got popping. And uh this was what? This was like 2013, 2014. So the Instagram was just now kind of getting going. Mm. So, you know, I posted that that documentary. I did an impact on YouTube. And then I started posting stuff on uh, Instagram. You know, impact, they didn't even have none of that. You know, they don't have no people that was, you know, my generation that was really, you know, knew, knew that type of stuff. So... They was just like, hey, you're, you know, you're the guy. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you're the guy. You taking the photos, taking the videos. So they just gave me that label, you know, just on some some fun type stuff, just because they didn't have nobody. But uh, you know, yeah, I, I definitely uh fell in love with it. Man, I never knew that. Well, yeah. I mean, I, I, I like a, a lot of the stuff I didn't know because I. I mean, I knew you had the injury when, when me and you both were hooping at UT Tyler, but but I didn't know that you just were like you you just weren't that motivated or that driven at that time to play basketball because music was was top priority or you know just a combination of of the two, just uh, injury mm-hmm. and you know how how that can affect the person. But I mean, just 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 looking back and and, and seeing how how you and me and how a couple of our, our our other teammates and roommates, you know, Ke- Kevin Murray, shout out to Kevo, shout out to Reese, shout out to uh, Ralph. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, and, 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 and at that time where we used to, you know, we used to work at FedEx and then you, and then you. <laughs> FedEx, boy. And then I, I, I remember though, you would go in and then you'd be, you know, you'd be making the beats on, on the phone or on your watch and you'd just be recording sure. stuff. Because I mean, you you was really a, you was really about that life, and I, I, I now hearing this part of the story, hearing how you know you were devoted to music before, and then you started investing with the camera, with the lens, and then you know getting the equipment, and and then one thing you didn't tell the people was you know while we were out in Tyler, you was DJing at parties. Uh, yeah, man. So so <laughs> you, so so you having that passion and you doing all that, but then now transitioning to work club. So so now are you still doing music? Or, or now is, is the focus just focusing on player development, focusing on growing work club? Like, what does that look like? Man, um, so I try to intertwine the two a little bit. Like, on some of my beats, I would throw them on my, you know, some of my workout videos and whatnot. But, man, the work club really just took over, man. Like, you know, I found a real passion into that. Um, a lot of my motivation from the music was with, the the crowd that I was with mm. but when I started the work club you know that type of crowd was just wasn't wasn't the right fit and you know one of my one of my best friends who's not he's not doing too well right now but uh that was kind of like my my driving force because you know when I'm with him the motivation just sparked and you know it is it was just love it was just love to make music. But now that, you know, he's doing whatever he's doing, it kind of kind of took the passion away from it. So, uh, you know, so every once in a while, I'll, make, I'll try to make some beats. It's just so hard, man. It's hard to make beats now. You know what I'm saying? Not without, without having somebody, you know, to listen to it. You know what I'm saying? Like when you got somebody that's making beats, and I'm making beats, and then we link up, and we like, oh, I want to hear that. Let's, ooh, you know, we just, you know, you know how it is that energy, that good energy. So it's like kind of like making beats with, with, without the passion. You know what I'm saying? And that's that's a tough thing to do. But this, you know, there's there's people that want beats from me, you know, but you know, uh, I don't know, man. That that passion ain't there. The money is all right, but it's not, you know, stressing, stressing mm-hmm. over right now. Yeah, yeah, man. I mean, I've, I mean, I think you, me, j- just like m- many other people, and and the student athletes might be listening to the podcast. I think you just hit on something big, and I just want to un- underscore it because you talked about you making a transition from when you were with this crowd to when you transition on the other side, and then now you're you're like with a different crowd because ultimately, you know, make, make typically. If if we're talking music, 
I, I could see that being, you know, a certain type of crowd because music is played certain type of places. And then we mm -hmm. go over here and then we look at like sports. Sometimes they intertwine, but, but, but sometimes they don't. So like, just talk really quick for us about how was that transition? Because when you went over to the, the, the sports side, I mean, I'm sure you might've had other people who were in a similar area or contacts that you had, but just like you were saying with the music side, you had, you know, that person where, where y'all were building together. So talk about like, just, you know, just the transition and how you felt just through that. Uh, <laughs> transition. Um, well, pretty much, you know, like a lot of people are motivated through music by being in a certain type of atmosphere. And that atmosphere is probably like a group of, group of, dude smoking weed or whatever um sipping lean or drinking ej or <laughs> you know what i'm saying and you go home and you smelling a certain type of way and this and that and it's just it's just not a good look you know on a, a professional professional level and um when i was starting off i mean even today I'm on call. You never know when, when you got a session, you know, there might be somebody like, Hey, can I get in the gym tonight? Mm. And then I got to be ready. I got to be ready at all times. I can't be coming in smelling like, you know, Mary, Mary J and alcohol and this and that. And, you know, I'm in, I'm in my building stages of my, you know, of my company. Well, I wasn't even, I wasn't even a company at the time, but I was, you know, I was, doing my thing. I was KG underscore work. So I already had, I had, I had my vision. And for the most part, I've always been, I try, I've, I've always tried to be, you know, professional. You know, I wasn't the, the type of dude that's walking around cursing and this and that, you know, so it was just a certain way about how I hold myself, you know, so that transition, um, it made it a lot easier when, um, uh, when my boy started doing whatever he was doing and um, there, I had no contact with him. So I couldn't go over there and make beats or, you know, sh show each other what we got with the music or what projects we working on. So, you know, everything happens for a reason. So the transition was a lot smoother for me, but you know, if he was still around, I probably would still be on it, to be honest. Man. And then do and then do you think basketball would take a back seat? Or where you what, what do you think that would where oh. do you think that leave work club? Man, that's that's a good question. Um if I if I would have got like a, a track with somebody big, like a big name, like let's say uh young Dolph or mm -hmm that black or, or something then I definitely would have that definitely would have gave me the feel to you know keep it going but you know obviously it's a lot of competition out there so uh you know you never know what could have happened but yeah if I would have got a record with somebody then I definitely would uh I could see myself putting music first hmm I mean, you was, you was my roommate, so you already know I, I was in my chair making noise in the apartment. So <laughs> definitely was definitely was heavy in it, for sure. Yeah, man, without a doubt. I remember, boy, I'd be like, turn that music off, man. I'm trying to sleep. <laughs> um, but, <laughs> but I'm actually glad you said that, uh, that, that there's a lot of competition just, just in music. Because one thing I've, I've begun to realize is that whatever industry you're in, it always seems like there's competition because, you know, that's what you're surrounded by. And especially the industry you're, you're in now as, as, far as, as far as player development. Because, I mean, I've, I've seen people up and down my timeline, you know, some people who they might change in their bio, you know, that they do professional development and they put a couple of cones outside on a playground and then have kids running through and running, you know, whatever that might be. But what, what do you feel separates Carlton Grant or KG work from, from everybody else that, that, that's in this space of, of player development and helping, you know, athlete, athletes get to the next level? Man, I've always been a, a creative dude. So I'm, I'm always, 
I always got my ear to the streets, you know what I'm saying? So I'm always learning. And I think that that's a, that's the thing that's wrong with a lot a lot of people is they either trying to be like somebody they're not, or they trying to do do too much. Mm. And I feel like because I'm I am who I am, I'm just already just a, a creative dude that you know that's always down to change some stuff. I think that's why I'm successful. You know, there was a. There was a there was a time where you know I got an offer or whatever, right? And uh, they labeled me as a trainer. They're like, "Well, if we go with this trainer, or this trainer," I'm like, "Well, first of all, <laughs> the percentages, you know, what I'm saying there's no way we could be having the same percentages because I'm I'm not just a trainer, you know, what I'm saying mm -hmm. I'm a brand." Mm. You know what I'm saying? It's a big difference. Anybody yeah. can be a trainer, but can they run their own brand? Can they promote their own brand? Can they take the photos for their brand? Can they edit videos for their brand? Do they have the quality for their brand? You know what I'm saying? So that's real. Not only, you know, am I a trainer, I bring so much more to the table. So I think with far as ig or whatever the case is i don't i've i've, I've always been the one that's always been motivation it's always been fun to see the brand grow because i knew what i brought to it you know what i'm saying so when you have somebody that enjoys the process so much and can actually do it hands-on it, it's just it's just different man <laughs> mm. so not only with my experience that I got with Impact and building connects, then you add the creativity. A lot of people, a lot of trainers, they'll they'll try to stand out by doing silly stuff. I've been, <laughs> I've done silly stuff too, just trying to do something to to make viewers look. You know what I'm saying? But uh, for the most part, it's all my stuff. My stuff legit, man. So. My stuff legit, and I bring out some good quality, and you know, it's, it's a work in progress. You know, the work continues. You know, we always evolving. As long as, as long as we put our mind to the craft and and keep pushing, we working. Dope, dope. Yeah, man. And I mean, to your credit, I know people that have worked with you. I know former teammates that I've had that that that's worked with you. And you know, I've I've heard I've heard good reviews. I've definitely heard good reviews. And even just seeing the people that you work with, seeing them consistently elevate to the next level, I think I think that speaks high uh, about about the caliber of clientele that that you have. And even in addition to that, just you know your your workout regimen, your experience, and what you're what you're doing and helping them accomplish. So yeah, man, keep keep up the dope work. Keep up the dope work. I appreciate it. Work with the E. Um, so 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 what is so where do you see Work Club going? Like what? Like what do you like? What what's the vision for 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 Work Club? Um, shoot, I don't know if you know, but I'm I'm hustling out of my apartments right now. We got an indoor gym, so what you see, I'm really training out of my apartments. <laughs> so I can only imagine when I get a home territory, what type of you know what I can do. But when I do have a home territory, that's, that'll be the, the real future of the work club because I got so much in store. You know, I know what Impact does. They're, they're, uh, I like what they do. I, I would love to have my own post-grad. I would love to do a pre-draft process. Mm. I would love to have the summer camps that I do have, but in my home territory, clinics. Um, obviously, you know, COVID is... The pandemic has ruined a lot of that stuff right now. But uh, when I have my own facility, it's, it's uh, we really rocking and rolling because people are rocking with me at the apartments right now. And anything can happen, you know, with residents just want to come shoot in or people trying to sneak in and this and that. So we, I'm just really just going off, off the text messages. When I can have my website and... You can just book anytime that you want and mm. 
it's just a whole different service when you can schedule, when you can have stuff at certain times, you know, like let's say I'm doing six to eight, um, six to eight small group training Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or some like I can't do none of that. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So because I don't know what's going on in the gym. There could be somebody that reserved the gym, or it could just be just residents and a couple of their boys and want to go shoot, shoot. You know what I'm saying? There's three hoops. So that one hoop, I, I do my thing, but it's just a whole ball game when I can get into my own facility because we we really finna go crazy when we do. Man. Man, that's what's up. And then, you know, as as, as all this comes together and you got the pre-draft process, you need somebody to come in and speak, holla at your boy. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. Holla, holla at your boy. What's the what's the best piece of advice that, that you've heard have you, as you've been going through this process, as you had the, the, the internships, as you've worked with many coaches, uh, working with male athletes, working with female athletes, and, and even as you've just been, you know, do, doing your one-on-one training and, and building work club. What's the worst piece of advice? I mean, what's the best piece of advice that anybody's ever given you through this process? Oh, man. Shoot. Uh, just keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> that's, mm-hmm. that's the best advice. Um, best advice, that's the, that's the, that's the feel. It's just knowing that when you have when you having hard days or whatever, just knowing that somebody sees you mean, mm. means a lot, man. Cause you, you you don't know. You know what I'm saying? You don't really know until people people show love and this and that. But um just have, you know, with athletes it's more like uh have fun. Like when once you once you lose, once you lose that. It's it's a wrap, you know what I'm saying? So I, I just try to enjoy enjoy the process and, and learn from my trials and tribulations, man. To be honest. Man. That's real. That's real. Cause I mean, so often when something gets hard, when we don't like it, we stop, we'll we'll quit, we whatever, and then that whatever momentum we had building up, whatever, you know, energy we had headed towards whatever the next goal might be. We stop and then we got to start over and then we're more likely to stop again. So, so, so just keep going, just press forward. I like that. I, I rocks with that. I rocks with that. Okay. Yes, okay. Sir. Okay. So, so now KG, as, as we wound this thing down, now I got to bring you to something that we like to call, we like to call the two minute drill. And, and the two minute drill is just where I ask you a few rapid fire questions. And then you just, you just answer with the first answer that comes to mind. Um, and the two minute drill is just, a part of the podcast, a segment I created just for a little bit of fun, just to, you know, so, so people can see the others, a little bit different side of you. Um, so are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> you look nervous. Why you look so nervous? <laughs> Shoot. Let's go. Bring it. Okay. Here we go. What's your favorite food? Pizza. What kind of pizza? Pepperoni. Uh, not the pepperoni, big dog. What's the no. <laughs> What's the What's the last book you read? Uh, shoot. Hold on. <laughs> Get out of your head. What's it called? Get out of, get out of your head. Mm, okay, okay. What's your favorite podcast? Shoot. Uh, all the smoke. Mmm, that is a good one. That is a good one. Most underrated cereal? Cinnamon Toast Crunch, man. Is it underrated, though? That's it's not underrated. underrated. It's underrated. Oh, God. What's, what's your go-to Netflix show? Shoot, it was Narcos. Mmm, I still need to watch that. And then, last, last question. You can take your time on this. What is one tip that you want to share with the student athlete? One tip. Follow your dreams. Mm. Man. That's real. Are you following your dreams now? Yes, sir. 
I, I am uh I'm big in it. I'm big in this. Put a lot a lot of groundwork in it with an E. Mm. So uh we we um uh, we filled up. Man. Yeah, 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 yeah. I I I feel that. I feel that for sure. And and that's that's one thing I also realized too is when people have truly invested a lot in their dreams financially, as far as energy, as far as time, it makes it a lot harder. It makes it a lot harder to turn against that. Like it makes it a lot harder to quit because you you too invested on too many levels. Yeah, I'm uh I'm going in, bro. <laughs> I'm going in. Um, obviously, through the pandemic, you gotta you gotta figure out new ways to to get to it. You know what I'm saying? The bills still gotta be paid. So, uh, you know, during the lockdown, um, I know you guys have brought up doing the Zoom and this and that. I ended up um, making my own private page full of drills. So I was out there on the streets doing drills. You know, providing providing some uh, some content for the people who couldn't train with me. So uh, that was one of my things. And shoot, right now I'm actually, uh, I invested in, in the stocks, man. That's one of my my other things doing that. That's, that's keeping a little, little excitement to my life as well. I think that's, I think that's big, man, is uh, finding, finding excitement. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. you can't just do one thing, you know, and, and expect to, to have the full amount of energy. I feel like you gotta balance yourself with certain things to, to keep you keep you going. Um, you know, in stocks, it's just something you just look look on your phone and and see see what's happening in the market. So it's it's definitely uh it's definitely been great for me. So and also like the book thing, I'm I'm just now starting to get get into into the books, man. So knowledge knowledge is power, and shoot, I'm 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 loving it so far. So we'll see how it goes. Yeah, man. I mean, I wish you could see over here. I got books all over the place, man. And I I mean, earlier this year, I I got into it. I started listening to uh, started finding some of the classic audio books on YouTube and just speeding up the playtime listening to it at 1.5 or 1.75 speed and you know i was i was listening to or reading probably like a book a, a couple books a month two three four books a month just clocking it in man because a lot of the information yes yeah, some of the information might have been an older book or whatever it might be but at the same time i realize when i'm reading then it just sparks something in my mind that i can apply in my life or in my business or in a presentation or wherever it might be but right. yeah man i mean that's that, that's definitely where it is man but uh but but kg where, how, how can people find out more information about just like you said you you had a you, you got the page you still got the page going where you know where you, where you got the drills going and people can get in contact with you uh in regards to that yeah um just follow me on kg underscore w-e-r-k and that'll give you the information you need i got my carlton grant pro instagram at which is the the basketball drills? It's on my bio, so just go to KG underscore work, and you'll pretty much find where you can buy my merch, where you can get those drills for nine ninety nine, unlimited drills, and um, my work basketball page, which is pretty much like keeping up with the Kardashians, you're keeping up with the work club, seeing what's what what my what my people is doing out here in the basketball world. If they putting on for the for the work club or who the new faces and you know who's getting scholarship offers, I pretty much that's pretty much my page for that. Yeah, man. And I mean, it's pretty dope because I mean, your your page ha has you you know you instructing them through some drills. Your page ha has like some highlights here and there of, of some of your some of your current clients and former clients, and and just like you said, the the success stories is one of the one of the things I really like. Uh, about about your page because I always love to see you know people getting to follow their dreams like you were saying and, and just see people winning in life because I mean why not like why not follow your dreams why not win big why not get to go after that so man yeah KG like I said before man I love everything you're doing last question before I let you go who is the next person that you would like to see me interview on beyond the ball 
Jordan Isom. <laughs> Jordan Isom? All right. All right. <laughs> Jordan Isom. Okay. Wanna, you can tell them who that is if, if they don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So everybody, everybody listen. So, so Jordan Isom is, is, is one of our good friends. He was another guy who was working out there in Tyler, Texas uh, at, at FedEx. And, and, and this guy, he's, he is, uh, man, a big time entrepreneur. And I, I call him big time because, you know, they, they raised the money, started a food truck, and then, then he started doing some, some other businesses and he's doing some merch and some other dope stuff. He's, uh, he's always getting to the money, as he tells us. He's always getting to the money. So hilarious at the same time. He, he is hilarious. He, he I is. I'll be tuned in for sure. Man, Jordan, I, you remember where we met Jordan? I, I remember where I met Jordan, and I remember meeting that man at, at, at a party in Tyler. Yeah. I, I, like, he had on a shirt from his high school basketball team, and I was yeah. like, Cedar Hill? He was like, oh, yeah. And the next thing you know, I don't remember what happened the rest of that night, but um, <laughs> either here nor there. Man, KG, I, I appreciate you uh, for taking the time coming on the show, hanging out uh, with, with, with the ballers and myself and man everybody get get connected with kg uh if, if you're if you're somebody who's you know you're going through your student athlete journey or if you're somebody who's finished i, I would encourage you just, just to get connected with kg because he's doing great things and if you're even getting ready for the draft and you in vegas or you you getting ready and think about going to vegas for for doing like some of the workouts you definitely want to hit up kg underscore work that's it right Yep, yep. Uh, one more thing. Um, just look out, look out for for my young boys coming, man. Because you know, when I was doing my training, some of these guys were already had names, you know. So now, I'm like six years in with some some of my young bucks. Mm. You know, so this is also another excite exciting time for me, being in like I'm I'm in my seventh year, so you know. I got some of these guys young, so to see the the progression over the years is going to be very exciting. So we got some we got some young bucks, so I can say that uh been on the team from from the bottom now. So it's a whole whole another a whole another segment of of work club coming. Man, new class work club, the new class. That's that's what's up, man. That's what's up. So everybody out there listening, all the ballers, if, you, if you're if you taking the time to, to listen, I would just ask you to share this with one friend uh, that you know or you feel that it could benefit. And if you're listening on whatever platform you're listening, if it's YouTube, if it's Apple, if it's Spotify, wherever, I would just encourage you to subscribe and share this podcast so we can continue to spread the message and continue to encourage people, just like KG said, to follow their dreams. Because I'm Jonathan Jones. And this is Beyond the Ball, where we help you succeed beyond your degree. All right. Appreciate you.